Let's go to 2 Peter 2, 1. But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will also be false teachers among you who will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. Now, I want you to notice a couple of things. Maybe you all, hopefully you all are seeing some, some little themes here. Hope, hopefully, maybe that's the case. I hope so. That is this. A lot of the passages that are brought up are brought up speaking about someone leaving uh, the teachings, the tenets of the faith, the core essentials, what we believe. In other words, you can't be a Christian if you believe that Jesus is actually Muhammad in disguise. You can't be a Christian if you believe that, that all you have to do is stand on one leg and hop around like a bunny. Something that's other than what the scriptures teach. In other words, you cannot have your own gospel. You cannot come up or formulate your own way of salvation, nor can you forget or depart from what the Bible teaches. And we see that. So what does he say here in second in second uh, Peter? He says, but false prophets arose, also arose among the people. Which people is he speaking of? Who do you think Peter has in mind when he says they also, past tense, arose amongst uh, the people? The Jews. We've been told that. We know it's going to happen. Now, Peter is, now this is kind of, this This letter is in general, but Peter still always has a an eye and ear towards, towards Jews. But this is also kind of all-inclusive. So he says, just as there will also be false teachers among you. And what will the false teachers do? They will teach something different. How do we know so? Because he says, who will secretly introduce destructive heresies. Now, where people think that these people were saved, because it uses this word right here, who were who bringing swift destruction upon themselves, these people who uh, were bought by the master. But now here's a question, though. Does that necessarily mean that they were saved? No, it does not. How do I know? Well, there are other passages that let us know that there are people who have been bought by the Lord. As a matter of fact, he is speaking of Israel. We all would agree that God has taken measures to bring them out. And there's something that he always says about them, not meaning or implying that they are saved. Notice what he says. He says in 32 5, he says, they have acted corruptly towards him. They are not his children because of their defect, but are a perverse and crooked generation. Look at that, verse 6. Do you thus repay the Lord, O foolish and unwise people? Is he not your father who has bought you? He has made you and established you. Now, what is he saying? He's not saying that these people are saved, that they were all believers, or that they were ever believers. As a matter of fact, he has called them a foolish, a stiff neck. As a matter of fact, he's called them treacherous. He's called them unfaithful. He said that they have no faith. So he's not saying they once believed and then stopped. No, he's saying, especially them as a nation. Are there some inside of Israel who will go on to be saved? Sure. But he's speaking holistically of them. And he says, so this term about those who were once bought, he all he's speaking of is what God has done for them. One, bringing them out. Um and making a way for them. But he's not saying that he has purchased their salvation. Amen.